push that rock here with Flint and Matt. This lesson covers the divergence test. Let's look at a summation. We have the sequence A sub N, and we're adding up all of its terms. So you'll notice that we have A1 plus A2 plus A3 and so forth all the way out to A sub N. And since we're adding up all the terms of this sequence, we have a series. Now, what we're going to do is subtract all of these terms, all except for the last one, from S sub N. Okay? So we subtract them all over, and we have A sub N by itself. And then we look right here, and we realize, hey, this is S sub N stopping at N minus 1. So it's S sub N minus 1. So A sub N, oh my goodness, here we go. A sub N is S sub N minus S sub N minus 1. Now when we take the limit, we're going to take the limit of both sides. And when we take the limit as N goes to infinity, we notice that if N is going to infinity, so is N minus 1. N minus 1 will also be going to infinity. Because if N's infinity, minus 1, you're still infinity. You can just keep one step over. You can always go one more step at infinity. So we're taking the limit of both sides. We'll bust this limit up. So we have the difference of two limits. And we're going to assume in this problem, we're going to assume that S sub n converges. So S sub n is converging to some number L. Well, if S sub n is converging to L, so is this. It's the same sequence because we just go one more step. It's, it's going the same place this guy's going. So we get zero. That's interesting. What we realize is that if we look at a series, the sum of a sequence, and we go to infinity, and it converges, then the limit of the sequence, the argument of the series, here's the argument of the series here, the limit of that argument, the limit of the sequence, must be zero. Now we're going to use that to develop something called the divergence test, but we first need to review some logic. Uh -oh, didn't prepare that page. Here we go. Let's think about a statement like it's raining outside, there must be clouds. This is called a statement. P implies Q. Raining outside implies Q and uh, implies clouds in the sky. P implies Q. The converse of such a statement would be that clouds imply rain. Q implies P, but that's not necessarily true. So the converse of a statement is not ever necessarily true. It could be cloudy, but not rainy. We all know that. The contrapositive of a statement, however, is always true. If the statement's true, the contrapositive of the statement is true, always. So, in other words, if there's no clouds, that's the negation of this, implies the negation of this. So we flip-flop the order. We put Q over here and P over here, and we also not them. We, we negate them. So no clouds implies no rain. Yeah, if there's no clouds, it's not raining. So not Q implies not P. And the contrapositive of the true statement is always true. We're going to use that now. We proved earlier that a series that converges means the limit of its argument, the sequence, is zero. Oh, so by contrapositive, if this limit here, if we negate it, if we say the limit is not zero, then we can conclude that this series does not converge, which means it diverges, and this is called the divergence test. Now, I must warn you, warning, students make a logic error here. Warning, if the limit of the sequence equals zero, well, that doesn't imply anything. That's not a thing. It's not a thing. If the limit of the sequence equals zero, we haven't learned anything. Now, if you knew that a series converges, you'd know that limit is zero, but we're going to be going from the sequence to wanting to conclude about the series. And if the sequence's limit is zero, as n goes to infinity, we haven't learned anything about this series. But if the limit of the sequence as n goes to infinity is not zero, then we have learned that the series is divergent. Hence, that's why it's called the divergence test. Success starts here at Temple College.